Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about find or evaluate the inverse of a function. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. So we're going to start here with a table. And this is the tabular function. Okay, so notice this table here. What does it represent? A function, f of t, is given in our table, showing distance in miles that a car has traveled in t minutes. Find and interpret what f inverse of 70 is. So notice our table here. We have t equals minutes, and that's 30, 50, 70, 90. And f of t, the function itself, miles, the function of t miles here, is 20, 40, 60, 70. So what we can see here, let's say it's 70 minutes of driving, will hit 60 miles, all right? But what is F inverse, right? They're asking us what is the F inverse of 70, okay? So normally we would say, okay, F of, F of um, 70, F of 70 means in 70 minutes, we would travel 60 miles. What's F inverse of 70? Well, we'll look at the output F of T, all right? Or F of 70, right? So what we wanna see is say, okay, f of what, t, equals 70, and that matches with that inverse there. So what does that mean? Well, when the output 70, the input is 90. So what it's telling us here is the f inverse of 70 equals 90, that after traveling 70 miles, we would have been traveling for 90 minutes, okay? So after 70 miles of driving, we would have traveled or been in a car traveling for 90 minutes minutes and that's the uh, relationship here in tabular form of our function and its inverse all right let me erase this and so we'll dive into the next part okay so here we're given this graph and we're going to evaluate a function and its inverse from a graph at a specific point or at specific points so we're given g of x and we want to find what g of 3 is and g inverse of three. Okay, well, what's g of three? What is g of three? That's an easy one. Well, three is the input, that's the x value. What's the output there? What's the y value there? We can see that to be just one, okay? So g of three equals one, not too bad. What is g inverse of three? Well, what we wanna do is we look at our graph, we say, okay, reverse it back up. What, asks us this question, what x value gives us an output of three. And we look at that, we say the output, g of x being three, gives us the input of five. So the inverse of three is equal to five, g of five equals two, three, and five is the in, g inverse of three is equal to five. And we can see that in our graph here. Notice the points there, we're pointing at three, one, and five, three. And that's how we're finding g of three and g inverse of three. Okay, let me erase this and we'll go to the next problem. All right, so we're actually gonna use a common formula that hopefully you know. C equals five ninths of F minus 32. If you know what that formula is, please let me know in the comment section below. This is did you do that already? Okay. This is the formula converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And this is a common thing that we see. Some countries use Fahrenheit for temperature, some use Celsius, and there's a formula that helps you get there. So what we're gonna do is use this formula here, and we're gonna find its inverse, really, right? Find the inverse to find what is Fahrenheit to then Celsius, okay? So to do that, we wanna get F by itself. So we have to multiply both sides by 9 fifths, and we're left with C times 9 fifths equals F minus 32. Add 32 to both sides, and we're left with F by itself equals, oh, I should put 9 fifths first, 9 fifths C plus 32. And we have the inverse function here. So let's see this. Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths times the Celsius function, put C is 5 ninths times F minus 32, 
okay? So again, that's our Celsius function right here. And then we plus 32 right at the end. So this is a Fahrenheit function, there's a Celsius function in there. Well, the nine, five nines cancel, and we're left with F equals F minus 32 plus 32, 32 is cancel, F equals F, we're good. It verified it is an inverse function there. All right, so let me erase this, and we'll go solve some more inverse functions. All right, we want to find the inverse of f of x equals 2 over x minus 3 plus 4. So let's set this up as y equals. y equals 2 over x minus 3 plus 4. And let's get x by itself. Subtract 4 to both sides. And we're left with y minus 4 equals 2 divided by x minus 3. Okay? Then... What we can do is cross multiply in a sense, so we're swapping the x minus 3 and the y minus 4, and we're left with x minus 3 here equals 2 over y minus 4. Well, not cross multiply, it's just swapping here, okay? And you can see it like that if you need a fraction, but you're allowed to swap like that. All right, add a 3 to both sides, and we have x equals 2 over y minus 4 plus 3, all right? So we got x by itself, what does this mean? So the f inverse of y is equal to 2 over y minus 4. And of course, we can simplify it more, but we did plus 3 right there. Or if you want to write it as such, we can say f inverse of x is equal to 2 over x minus 4 plus 3 by swapping the x's with, or the y's with the x's there. All right? So let's go solve another one here, number 9. This one's with radicals. So again, we want to find the inverse. So find the inverse of the function f of x equals 2 plus the square root of x plus 4. All right? So again, what we're going to do, we're going to write this as y. So y equals 2 plus square root of x plus 4. Let's try to solve for x here. Subtract 2 to both sides. y minus 2 equals the square root, x plus 4. Square both sides to get rid of that square root. Okay? And now we're left with y squared, or y minus 2, sorry, squared equals x plus 4. All right. Oh. <laughs> Quick mistake here. Just to keep it consistent, this is actually x minus 4 in here into the parentheses. So I'm going to fix that here before I just keep on going across the board. Keep it consistent here, Sean. So minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. Luckily, it hasn't really changed anything so far that we've done. We add a 4 to both sides here to get x by itself. And now it would make a difference. That's why I caught it. And x equals y minus 2 all squared plus 4. So our f inverse of x is equal to Right, flipping now the y's and the x's, x minus 2 squared plus 4. Now, you're welcome to, if you want, I sometimes actually, once I get to this stage right here, I'll switch the x and y's there and then solve for um, y, get y by itself. That's how I usually do it, but some people like to do it differently when you do it at the end, where you get x by itself and then write it now as an inverse function, uh, switching the x's and y's. But, it's up to you. We found the inverse function of a radical function, right? This was a radical. Okay? All right. So I hope you learned how to find or evaluate the inverse of a function. If you did, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for any, everyone else. So as always, thanks for watching. Minute math, minute math. When you need help, you use minute math. Minute math, minute math. When you need help, you use minute math. Minutemathtutor.com.